Well, the author is uh, is is his name was Avram, Rabbi Avram Danzig. Danzig was also the name of his uh, hometown, which is a port city on the Baltic, hmm. a, um, a center for for trade and commerce and uh, the movement of goods from different parts of the world. The local commodities, commodities coming from even the New World, are making their way uh, through Northern Europe to the ports of Northern Europe. Um, so he, this is where he's born. He's in the, the middle of the 18th century, which, as we know, is a century of uh, tremendous, um, you know, it's the, uh, the modern world is underway in many ways, and mm-hmm. uh, a lot of changes are uh, hitting the world, and the Jewish world in particular. Um, he's uh, from a, a rabbinic uh, scholarly family, mm-hmm. and they take education very seriously, something that he would... Uh, he would take two, and he was actually sent. And this is kind of a, a little bit unusual because they didn't have the formal yeshiva system when he was a youth that mm. we're familiar with, like in our time. But he was able to learn in Prague under the Noda Yehuda, Yechezka Landau, mm. um, and so he had a um, like a solid rabbinic education. Um, and again, this would have been I you know we don't know too much about the program, but like it was re- restricted presumably. It was you had to be you qualify. You had to be, and maybe the family also had to be of means mm. to just get you you know like uh, who's paying for the lifestyle there. Um, but Prague <laughs> is a major is a major you know uh, Central European city, and so he's from a port city, which is port city is always very worldly. You know, your mix mm. of people, the sailors, the language they speak, and the and you know it's the um, in English it's a big thing, but you know. Uh, the sailors are the one who spread the jargon that come from different languages. And so, mm. uh, uh, you know, it's a place of cosmopolitan uh, type, type, mm. uh, type, type well, situation. Well, it sounds like it's not just goods that are being coming in and out, but also ideas and languages as well. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not, you know, uh, no one's, oh, the great, um, you know, it's not, uh, uh, you know, one of the enlightenment capitals perhaps, but it's, um, you know, it's, it is a place of, um, you know, uh, uh, some some wealth and prosperity, and uh, mm-hmm. even now it's a major port city. Um, mm. Anyhow, so he's able to st- study in Prague, and uh, but he makes his home in Vilna, in uh, what is now Lithuania. Um, and it's in Vilna. Uh, we don't know if he was drawn to Vilna for this reason, but he becomes acquainted with, with the Vilna Gaon and becomes a student of his. Um, mm-hmm. Now we know he's a student because. He himself mentions the the uh, the the, the Vilna Gaon many times in the book, although it's like a, you know it's like under a hundred mentions, so it's like you know, he doesn't mention them <laughs> every page. But like he is a, and most of the we should say most of the um, when the Chayyim mentions him, he's mostly quoting the the commentary to the Shulchan Aruch that was published after the Vilna Gaon died. Mm. But there are a few places where he says like stories, like he says I, I know things personally, mm. um, and he's also quoted in. Um, limit in limited ways in other books of people that were like in the circle of the, the Vilna Gon and his and his students. Um, hmm. We should also say that he has a Haskama to the um, the Sefer Masira, Vilna 1832. Um, even though uh, we see from the date here that he died 1820, the Haskama is, is dated 1817. Hmm. The Sefer Masira is an important work about the custom and the positions of the Vilna Gon in Halacha. Oh wow! And so, yeah, he's on the P like he was a known, um, you know, you wouldn't ask a guy who didn't know, but like he was in Vilna, he was, um, he was, uh, and he, yeah, he had direct, he had direct access uh, and we get that from his writings, but also it's, it's known from a little other context there. Hmm. Um, but he, he was not a rabbi. This is the, one of the, one of the great milers about the, um, about uh, Rav Danzig is that he was not a, a professional um, Rav and he was later in his life when he was old man he sat on a, on a base tin in Vilna the base tin um, and he's known as a more ascetic as a result. Uh, Vilna had a great controversy in the 18th century with the chief rabbi and so they didn't really have a chief rabbi after that but they had huh. people that you could you know ask your questions to and uh, you know get guidance and they called that a more ascetic and so he's known as it's in the title pages of a lot of the books it's called a more ascetic the Kehillah Kedusha Vilna. Mm-hmm. Um, but he was a businessman. He was a businessman, a self-employed businessman, presumably, who traveled. Um, mm-hmm. And you get you get it. He says he mentions it in the introductions of some of his books. He said, I was in the fair at, at Leipzig, such and such, and I had all the my sparring with me, and everyone knows <laughs> I was, and the other guys, I didn't learn. It's not, a, it's not good. <laughs> But it's also in his Chayyadim, which itself is a is a like a handbook for daily and calendar life. 
in Jewish in the, in the Jewish mm-hmm. life. That's uh, it, it's how you wake up in the morning until the laws of Purim, mm-hmm. and it's written in a uh, he he disregards the the chapter structure of the uh, the tour in the Shulchan Aruch and writes his <laughs> own kind of um, format. Mm-hmm. Uh, the uh, chapters w- w- within which are numbered paragraphs. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, he was really addressing the kind of, um, you, you know, with a good Jewish book, you address both the, the, the elite scholars, but also the ordinary folk. Mm-hmm. He was really trying to get, he says in the introduction, the, the Balabatim and the Naarim, the young people that are, that are you know, teenagers maybe uh, that are on their way to, you know, acquiring their education as, mm-hmm. as whatever they could in that, Eastern Europe was the poverty was very intense. People had to work, and mm-hmm. so how how you know what formal schooling people actually had, what what grade they would you know stick around and and but you know, if they were literate, he had a book for them, but it was also a book that communicated to people that were very well versed in the in the Gemaras and the, uh, the 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 post game the um, the codes of, of of Jewish law up until that point, mm. and he's also the first book is the first uh, edition of the Chayyim is eighteen. Um, 1810. So I'm going to go to the next page here because we have nice mm-hmm. pictures. Um, and uh, he revises it within his lifetime, a second edition, a fuller, a fuller edition. He really added the laws of Passover, uh, mm-hmm. incidentally. Um, but it, the real presence in this, in this handbook, right, this daily life is the traveler. People that are on mm-hmm. the road, people you need to wash your hands, but the stagecoach is not going to stop you. And you know, for Mincha, like, what do you? How do you do this? How do you live this life? Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a lot of just, just like priceless pieces. You know, he says, for instance, you know, Hilcha Shabbos. He says, um, you know, the custom the Jews is to wear nice clothes on Shabbos. You wear your nice suit or whatever, whatever culture you're in. Your nice um, bekisha, whatever it is. <laughs> um, so some people, he said, when they're on the road, they're staying in a in a in a non-Jewish inn. You know, because this is how the um, the network, the uh, you know, on the road, you'd have to stop somewhere, and they had dead ends. So he said a lot of people would refrain from putting on their nice show, their nice Shabbos clothes. Um, he says this Shabbos is not for who sees it; it's for Shabbos itself, and um, <laughs> and that's you know. So he had, he was a frummer. He had like um, you know, a kind of uh, a very um, uh, a traditional uh, outlook, and um, but he had his eyes open. He saw the world, and he tried to really give people gui- practical guidance in how to live in the uh, the world that um that they were living in those days which in many cases we recognize it's very familiar to us in some cases <laughs> and he wrote yeah. a bunch of books but they're all basically halakhic he has a commentary on the um on the Haggadah, which is um not entirely halakhic but he does reference some halakha there too mm-hmm. um you know it's interesting i knew about chachmas adam about on your day material i wasn't familiar with all these other ones although i'm Maybe a totally separate conversation is about him and alcohol and Chachmas Adam. That'd be a kind of an interesting. Um, no, it really would be. Obviously, I'm, right, I'm being right. very, uh, you know, drink oriented, but also like it, it comes up contemporarily with regards to beer or whiskey aged in containers that previously held Gentile wine. I actually uh, recently came across some tissue vote of of Noda Behuda, one of his teachers talking about some issues that were coming up with whiskey in their time. So I, I think it would be interesting. Uh, I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there, but I definitely like our focus for our present conversation yes. about Chai Adam. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, no, it's, you're absolutely right. Uh, the practical reality of the way they were living and the, uh, the presence of alcohol, it's, it's some they didn't shy away from. He didn't for sure shy away from this was, you know, it's in a way that I think we would, I mean, we have to talk about the halachas, but like it was, well, we'll see. Maybe we'll see some examples. You know, I but, think that's a great segue. I yeah. Think it's a great yeah segue. So I just have um, some cool slides. This is um, yeah. just for the audience. If they ever get, get a chance, this is a catalog that's printed at the back of some, some book, uh, some Hebrew book that I stumbled upon on Google books. And here you have multiple editions of the Chayyadim and the Chakmasadim, well, the mm-hmm. Chakmasadim and the Binasadim here mm-hmm. um, for sale. You could, you could order into the bookstore apparently is in Vienna. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is one of the classic ones. This is um already in the before the turn of the 20th century hmm. the book is already being stored in the, uh, the the library in san francisco so like this is a a serious book in the 19th century you know it's uh <laughs> it it made its it made its way around the world um 